Hello, congregation. Tonight we are gathered to talk about the life of Gwen Laura. And Lord, I need a hot mess. Jesus, take the wheel. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. Tonight we are talking about <laughs> a hot mess, and that is Gwen Laura, her life, and the Remnant Fellowship Church. Because... Woo, even Jesus knows it's a hot mess. It is a hot mess. There's a lot of scandal. Um, a lot of people might know Gwen from, uh, it was called the uh, Way Down Workshop. It is a program that she, that she started. This is back in the 90s. She started this program where you eat only when like your body tells you it's time to eat, like your stomach's growling and that kind of stuff. She started this, I would say fad, but it it was a program that she started, and she was featured on a lot of things. She's featured on like Larry King Live, a lot of different like talk shows back in the day. So it was a very, it gained a lot of momentum very quickly. I think between 95 and 98 was like the peak time for her program, actually. And the numbers that I read said that between all the churches that were having these workshops there, there was like 200, between 200 and 250,000 people taking these workshops. That's a whole lot of people and a whole lot of money because to be in this program, you had to pay these fees, you had to buy a workbook, to actually do the program, right? So, Gwen was raking in the money. Do you hear me? Raking it in. There's conflicting reports, but... This, okay, so let me just say this. Before we go any further, this is all my opinion. I don't know that these are facts. I can't say that they're facts, but it is my opinion, okay? So, just going forward. Don't want any of the crazy folks from the church to come after me. So... Supposedly, this program taught you of ways to lose weight, and it really wasn't by like diet and exercise. It was a lot of people say kind of like starvation techniques, and a lot of the techniques that they taught borderline on ED and a lot of tactics known in the ED community. So they were teaching these things. And she was making a killing off of it. Now, her, now Gwen herself, she was, she was stick thin. Okay, I mean, if Augusta Wind came up, came through, and Gwen would just sail off into the the sunset. Okay, when I tell you Gwen was skinny, she looked like a skeleton with skin on it. Okay, so so Gwen was very very thin, a very thin woman. So you have all these people that are obese looking to her. And she's like, this is how you do it. This is how I, I stay skinny. So, of course, people are jumping on this train, you know. And it's supposedly church-related or godly influence. She used a lot of scripture. She used God to inspire the this program, you know. That's what she says. And really, anybody that has lost weight, I'll be the first one to tell you. When I was younger... In high school, I was very, I was very obese. I lost a lot of weight, got very, very thin, gained weight, lost weight, and now we know I'm thick. So, you know, it's all about calories in versus calories out. If you want to lose weight, you're going to have to burn more calories than what you're consuming. And that's just, that's the end of it. But there are people who were part of this program that said that they were consuming like 300 to 900 calories a day. Okay, I think that it's, I think on average it takes like 1,400 calories for your body just to function in a day. Because your body is always going, it's always like digesting food, you know, you're moving, all those kind of things. So your body needs calories coming in to function, you know. Well, Gwen... She was teaching people only eat when your stomach growls, you know. And then it is said that she told people, eat a bite, drink a bunch of water. Eat a bite, drink a bunch of water. 
And so what you're doing is you're taking in a small amount of food and all this water so your stomach is getting full. But so that is the way down workshop pretty much in a gist. And I mean, it took the nation by storm. I mean, she was she was signed to one of the biggest publishers at the time. So Gwen's life was going real good. You know, she's riding this wave. She's bringing in all this money. Now, Gwen was married to a guy named David. And she had two kids. Now, David never hardly came to church. And I think it's crazy because he never came to church because David was a little heavy. He he weighed a little bit. You know, he was a little overweight. We don't know if that was because of Gwen or if that was his decision. But they had two children. A boy and a girl, I'm not going to name their names because by what I understand, they like to keep their privacy. And that's what I'm going to say. Just because your mother or father does something doesn't mean that you are guilty of it. You can't help who your parents are. And what I have read and researched, they kind of just followed along behind their moms. They weren't leading people, you know, and... And that kind of stuff. So, anyway, not to get on that tangent. But I'm not going to name their names in the video. The daughter, like, would speak every once in a while, you know. And the son, he actually ran, like, their music ministry. So, let me break let me break some things down. At the peak of the time that the Way Down Workshop was going, right? She's putting out these books. Well, she announces, Gwen, she announces that she does not believe in the... Or she... Is not sold on the Holy Trinity. If you don't know what the Holy Trinity is, that is God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. There's God that is in heaven. You know, Jesus came to earth to um, help us repent, to build a bridge so that we could have everlasting life. If you're a Christian, you know, that's what we believe. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God that when you become saved, dwells within you, and the Holy Spirit helps you to make good choices. You know, it tells you, it's kind of like a conscience. It tells you, no, that's wrong. You don't need to do that. If you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing, it convicts you. The Holy Spirit convicts you so to tell you like, hey, that's wrong. You don't need to be doing that. So Gwen is like, mm -mm, I don't believe in the Holy Trinity, you know? And it caused a whole, whole bunch of stink. Do you hear me? A whole bunch of stink. So she actually was in the middle of, or had just ended writing a book, right? Well, this book is about to be published. It's a, it's like ready to go, right? Well, when all this mess went down with her and this the Holy Trinity, the publisher says, mm -mm, no, we're not doing this, and canned her book, actually. And I don't believe that they actually put another book out with her. That was like their the end of their working relationship with, with Gwen. So... Anything after that, you know, Gwen pretty much self-published or, or put out there on her own. So that was a huge blow for Gwen, was that separation. So the church kind of went, started going downhill. Now, it was divided. Half of the people supported Gwen, and half of the people were like, mm -mm, peace out, Girl Scout. We No, we don't believe in what you're selling. You know what I'm saying? They were like, no, this is, this is wrong. Gwen lost half of her base at that time with with what she put out there you know Gwen being Gwen she's not gonna let that like hold her down right so she keeps on going so she opens a church called the <laughs> called the Remnant Fellowship Church it's a beautiful building I've seen pictures of it it's an absolutely gorgeous church it's huge it's on this huge plot of land they have all this land that they do weddings, hold events. It, it, it's really, really beautiful. It's beautiful. Now, I don't want to come out and say and straight up say it, but it was very C U L T ish. You know what I'm saying? Like it was very like, here, drink the Kool Aid. You know what I'm saying? Like, drink the Kool Aid. Come on, be a part part of the party. You know what I'm saying? You got all these people and. This church built a community. They had everything you pretty much needed in this community. They had like people that would work on cars, you know, air conditioning folks, I, like financing people, like selling homes. Like 
they had a community kind of within their own community. So they didn't kind of, they didn't need the outside world. You know what I'm saying? This church is like almost self-contained. So they would throw like, they would do weddings. They would do all kinds of things. I've, I watched some of the weddings. Y'all, I have been watching and researching for days to do this video. It's crazy like how self-contained this church was. And, and anything she said, they just they they just took it in. It was it was like God was just speaking straight to them. You know what I'm saying? So everything that Gwen would tell them, they would absorb. You know. She, now I will say this: as picky as they are on a whole bunch of stuff, and you can't eat nothing, right? But you can drink alcohol, you can dance, and let me tell you about the clothes. So when Gwen started, she was like real modest. You know, she looked like uh. She looked like everybody's soccer mom, you know what I'm saying? She was like sweaters and jeans and she'd wear these long dresses. Y'all, as the money started coming in, Gwen's dresses started coming on up, you know what I'm saying? It started creeping on up that thigh. I'm talking about short, short dresses. I mean, she was like, I saw some pictures where she looked like she was a, a high class street walker. I mean, Gwen was looking like she was fixing to go work the streets sometimes in some of this stuff that I saw her in. The children, though, they were dressing these kids like children of the corn, y'all. I mean, straight up children of the corn. Like, I was like, like, we're talking about ringlets and everything. You know what I'm saying? So, it was, it was eerie. One thing that the church has gotten a lot of public flack about is how they discipline their children. It's actually horrible how they discipline their children. They're... They have very strict rules for their children. They're kind of taught to be seen and not heard. Um, children, These children are not allowed to be children, if you ask my opinion. They have to be quiet, act perfect all the time. And if your child wasn't behaving, you would beat them with a hot glue stick. And we're talking about the long ones. These were long glue sticks. And the church used these because they wouldn't leave marks on the kids. Isn't that something? There are a lot of members that have come forward now and have talked about this. Now, Gwen, Gwen has denied that she ever told members of the church to beat kids with hot glue sticks. The other members of the church do not agree with Gwen's denial of her telling members of the church to beat their kids with these glue sticks. So, they have these super strict rules, right? Well, there is a family... I don't know if they went to the church in Tennessee and then moved to Atlanta. I didn't go super in-depth with this, but there was a family who, they had a little boy, and I guess he had some behavioral issues, right? So they would lock him in a wicker box. And they, there was conversations that were released between Gwen and her and other members of the church where they would lock him in this wicker box. They would take everything out of his bedroom except for a Bible. It was like a prisoner, I would say, for being a kid. Kids are going to make noise. They're going to make mistakes. They're kids. You know what I'm saying? They are kids. But they were treating kids in this church like prisoners. They weren't allowed to be kids. So this husband and wife... They were known for locking their son in a wicker box, removing everything from his bedroom. Well, one day they had locked him in this wicker box. Well, he kept popping his head up, you know, asking them, when can I get out this box? When can I get out this box? And they would slam the, the top of the wicker box down on him. Well, he ended up passing away in this box, right? So they have to go on trial. The parents go on trial. Well, guess who who backs them when they're on trial? The church does. The church pays all their legal fees, starts these two websites to defend them, to 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 start these petitions to get them out of jail. It's a mess. The church was backing these two monsters that had done this to their child. There's phone call conversations between the mother and Gwen. And and they sat down for an interview. Gwen and Joe sat down for an interview, and this reporter is asking them like, "What do you think? What do you think about the glue sticks?" 
Gwen's like, oh no, I never told the church. I never told the church she used glue sticks. You know, there's all these contradicting things. And they had the phone conversations of Gwen. And she, let me tell you what, when they would question her and they would play the audio, Gwen would come right on back with it. You know, she was, blah, 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 no, I didn't blah, blah, I don't, you know, she had an answer for everything to deny that she was in the wrong. You know what I'm saying? So they backed two murderers pretty much. The, that's what this church is all about. They back their folks. You know, they pay the legal bills. I mean, it's sad. It's sad that that children would be treated like this. They also taught at this church that divorce was wrong. It didn't matter what was going on in your household. If your husband was beating you, guess what? You went, You can't divorce him. You can't. If he was going out and he was hoeing around in the community, guess what? You got to stick with him. If he gives you STD, too bad, so sad. Pray to Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were, they had all these restrictions and all these, like, these beliefs. Like, you literally could not get a divorce. It was like, if you got a divorce, you were going to hell. You know what I'm saying? Like, you were done. You were done. So, there was literally wives in this community their husbands were like beating the shit out of them. Their husbands were having an affair, having kids with other other women, and the wives were just sitting there like taking it, you know? And something that I found very crazy is there was no women in charge at this church except for Gwen. All of the people, the leaders of the church were all men. So let's just say you got Sally Joe and Benjamin, right? So Benjamin's out like whoring around, like sleeping with half the community. Sally Joe can't do nothing about it except for report it to the men of the church. So how are you going to feel as a woman talking to these men about your husband being out sleeping around? If you reported it to one of these men at the church, they would bring you in for counsel. Now, you can say you're going to get a divorce. You could say, I'm going to divorce my husband, but guess what? The church is going to back your husband because they don't believe in divorce. So, they're going to help pay his legal fees, and, and you're just shunned. You are shunned from the church. You know what I'm saying? Like, bye, bye, Sally Joe. We don't know you. And this is how they kind of kept a hold on people. Because you were shunned from the community. You didn't have any friends after this. You know, it, they almost scared people into staying into in these situations and putting up with this shit that nobody needs to deal with. You know what I'm saying? All this craziness is going around. Well, <laughs> Gwen meets this guy. And his name is Joe Laura. And if you guys don't know him, he was an actor in Hollywood. He's met, He's a hot mess. He is the he is the train conductor of the Hot Mess Express, okay? Joe was a wannabe actor. He played Tarzan in a in a Tarzan movie, but he was kind of like this uh this wannabe actor. I mean, yeah, he landed some roles, but he was a wannabe. So Gwen meets Joe, right? Well, she falls in love with Joe. So guess what? Gwen calls up David. Hey, guess what, David? I know we've been married for 40 years, but I want a divorce. Gwen divorces David to be with Joe, right? Lord, don't y'all know that I call some, some, a hot mess in the church? Can you imagine you have been beat by your husband for years and told you can't get a divorce or you're going to be shunned, but now the church leader and, and the person who created everything, the whole community that you live with, she's like, you know what? Forget all what about what I said. I'm going to divorce my husband and I'm going to be I'm going to remarry Tarzan over here. You know what I'm saying? To get rid of David, she like pretty much liquidates a whole bunch of things that she has. And it is said that David got over 3 million dollars for this divorce. To just kind of be like, "Bye. David has not been seen in public. He does not do interviews. He has never done an interview." It was like a get out my life, don't say a word kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? So Gwen paid David off. Y'all, it was not very long after Joe and Gwen started dating that they got married. So now she got a new boo thing, right? And they are running the church. Now, 
what from what I got and and the stories of other people that have been with Joe because Joe was with an actress. They have a child together. I won't go into all that because she's in hiding too, right? It's a it is it's shameful of what they put this woman through. Gwen and Joe put this woman through pure hell on earth. But they're Christians, you know what I'm saying? And they're leaders of the church. So they put this woman through a bunch of mess. But Joe and Gwen get married, right? Joe got a sugar mama now. You, you know what I mean? So he's like off flying in his private planes. She's buying him all this stuff. They're going on trips. And the member said that after she married Joe, they they didn't see Gwen so, so much anymore. You know, she would come to events... She would still run the church, but, you know, she used to be so involved in the church, and she would, like, mingle after church and that. Gwen showed up for church service. She gave the word, and she was like, peace out, Girl Scout. You know, she was going off to be with Joe. They would be on vacation all the time. These folks said when she met Joe, it was like a constant vacation. She was, she was off with her boo thing. You know what I mean? He always wanted to be an actor, right? So Gwen and Joe tried to get Hollywood to come to the Remnant Church and kind of base a reality show around the church and, and, and a, about what she was teaching, right? Guess what? Hollywood was like, mm -mm, girl, we don't want it. We don't want it. So what they do? They start a YouTube channel. Their YouTube channel is still up, and I will link it in the, in the description box. Because when I tell y'all, it is a mess. I'm going to put in some out, some outtakes, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and let them roll right now. Okay, so act like it, please. It's a show. Hi. Hey, what if I did it? Like, do you need some help? You need Could like you a... just kind of help me get through this? Once I get going. Okay. But I can't remember what I was supposed to say. Okay. Say hi to the people. Hi to the people. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hey, it's, everybody. Yeah. See? See? There, you, you get going. <laughs> you go. After you. I'm supposed to be, hello? Line. Hi. Hi. How y'all doing? It's Life with Gwen and Joe. <laughs> and this is my lovely, beautiful, gracious wife, Gwen. And I'm Joe. Let's do another one. I don't think that one's going <laughs> to cut. I don't think that's... Cut. Ain't that a hot mess, y'all? I'm talking about. So you can kind of see from the videos, it was a show. It was a show. I don't, I don't know if their marriage was as great as you know, as is portrayed. But one day, Joe and Gwen decide that they're gonna fly with five members of the church to Florida to actually go, <laughs> to actually go to a Trump rally or a Trump event, right? Because they were. They were Donald Trump supporters. You know, I don't care who you support. That's your own decision. But they were huge Trump supporters. So Joe, at one point in time, he had his license to, to fly. But I think it was a Class B or something like that. I, I was real confused when I was trying to learn the aviation stuff. So Joe had his license. Well, guess what? At the time that they took this flight... They said that the license had expired. Now, the church is still standing behind Joe, of course. And they actually have produced this license saying that he was licensed at the time of this of this trip. It's so much controversy. I'm not going to get into it because we don't know. They, only they know the truth, you know. But it was a huge investigation. And not too long after the airplane takes off... Um, the airplane goes down and it lands in a lake. Um, and everybody on board perishes, right? All seven people on board of the airplane die in this huge in this huge crash. They said that the debris field was it was huge. Like there was nothing left of this plane. Like it was in small pieces, right? Everybody on board died, and they said that they only recovered pieces of the people on board. I guess the impact was so, it was so bad that there was like pretty much nothing left of of the members that were on the plane. So the church lost 
seven members, seven high-ranking official members of the church in that one day, right? And Gwen's will. Now, this whole time, Gwen is talking about that she's going to give, she's going to leave all the money to the church and all that stuff. Well, come to find out when the will is read, guess what Gwen left the church? Not squat. Gwen did not leave the church nothing, right? Who did she leave everything to? Her two kids. I mean, I, I get you leave your kids stuff, you know what I'm saying? But you done talked all this up, talking about when I'm gone, the church, go, you know, you don't give the church jack squat, you know? Her daughter continues on with the legacy of the church now. They have a new pastor. The church is just, <laughs> they're just doing their thing, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I couldn't find out too much stuff about what is going on with the church now. Gwen and Joe are wherever Gwen and Joe are at now, you know? I can only imagine the being behind them in the line to get into heaven and what Jesus said to them. That is the story of Gwen, Laura, Joe, Laura, and the Remnant Fellowship Church. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.